So Nike has been having some pretty massive problems recently. I mean, we've all seen the headlines through lack of innovative products, massive layoffs, investors filing lawsuits against the CEO, and of course their stock price plummeting. However, Nike has a pretty insane comeback plan and coming back with them could be resellers too, or that's at least what they're saying. Resellers assembling it looks like with this latest post and this is not the only one. There's been a bunch of them. 2025 is going to be a pretty un unprecedented year. They're planning to bring back some of the most iconic sneakers of all time and it seems like it's not just a couple of them like we've seen in the past, it's a ton of them. It almost feels like Nike went on StockX, saw the resale prices of some of their latest releases like the Jordan 1s or the Jordan 4s, they saw how it's all under retail and plummeting and they're like, well we want to change that. So today we're going to go through some of the best sneakers that are dropping next year in 2025 and let me tell you this is the first time that I've kind of put all of the the 2025 releases together and I ended up with like 40 tabs open on my screen of pairs that I wanted to talk about. So we're just going through the absolute best ones, the top 10, maybe a couple others. Will this work? Well, if it doesn't, that could also be huge problems because once you bring all of these shoes back, that's it. Like what else do people have to look forward to? What sneakers do they even have left to bring back to keep people interested? Kind of feels like there might be a massive falling off of people's interest in retro sneakers, but let's go through. So here's a couple of the ones that actually didn't make the top 10 list just and these are like crazy sneakers They just didn't make the top 10. So of course, we've got Travis Scott's new Sharkadon model There's a couple dropping this year and there's a few dropping next year Nike is really playing into the whole Travis Scott theme. It's not just Jordan's anymore It is literally his own signature sneaker this new model, which is the Sharkadon This is the Baroque brown colorway, which is going to be dropping in 2025 This is the only early image that we have so it's not the best but at least you can see See. We've also got the Lech Blue colorway. This is a spring 2025 release. We've seen Travis wearing them. They pretty much look just like this. Not bad, but I'm just keen to get my hands on this sneaker to actually try it out. Could it bring more interest? You know, Travis got doing new silhouettes potentially, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. One of the most popular sneakers to drop in 2023 was the Yuto Horigome Nike SB Dunk Low. And we're getting another colorway in spring of 2025. This is the asparagus pair. And the interesting thing about the release of this is that it's pretty weird that we're getting another colorway. Normally people just get one shoe or one colorway and that's about it. Or if it does really, really well, maybe years down the line they get a second one. But two pairs in quite a short period is pretty odd. Nevertheless, I definitely prefer the original ones. These are not bad, but just don't really come close to the first ones, at least in my opinion. This is another really interesting one. So uh, you know how Nike did the whole SB thing with the Jordan 4, so they did the Nike SB Jordan 4 collab. Well, they're doing that with the Air Force One, which is pretty wild. Now, we don't actually know too much about what this looks like. This is just one of the samples, which is a little bit underwhelming. This looks like it has wear away materials, which is something that we've seen plenty of different times. But again, because of the hype of the 4s, this has definitely got some of that splashback. And I think people are very interested to see what they come up with. A couple Jordan 1s that are extremely solid, but just again, because of the amount that we're getting, they didn't make the top 10. We've got the Jordan 1 Low 85 Royal releasing spring 2025. That's pretty cool, especially it being an 85 cut. Another 85 cut, except this time the highs. This is the Jordan 1 High Reverse Shadow, and uh, this is a summer 2025 release. Obsidian Jordan 1 Lows is pretty crazy. I feel like they're a couple years late on this one. If they brought these out in like, you know, 2022 maybe, I think they would have done insanely well, but they're coming out next year, 2025 at some point. You guys remember Remember the fragments? Well, we're getting the fragments without the fragment logo, or at least that's what this mock-up looks like. This is a spring 2025 release. It's the Air Jordan 1 High OG Deep Royal Blue. You see there's a few differences between these and the fragments, mainly being it has a gray toe box, um, but that's about it. And I mean, again, this could change. It could be very different, but this is the best image that we're going off of, which is a speculative mock-up. Air Jordan 3 Black Cat is returning. So these are going to be dropping in March 2025, and I believe these were originally supposed to or at least leaked and rumored to drop in 2024. I think people really wanted the Black Cat 4s. Still not in the top 10 yet. We've got uh, the Jordan 4 Rare Air. This one's really interesting because we just got a new update on this one. So not only are we going to be getting a pair of 4s, the Rare Airs, but we're also going to be getting a pair of 3. So this is one of the best images that we have yet or mock-ups of what they should look like. We've got the 4s on the right, the 3s on the left, and the 3s are going to be pretty interesting because the back Nike Air 
branding one of them, the right pair is going to have it reversed, which is interesting. Now, some interesting things to note about this pair of shoes, why it's called Rare Air. They are actually doing some pretty interesting things with this one. So it's going to have a removable tongue patch. So this part over here, you can see this little image shows it pretty nicely. And the distinctive feature is that only 25% of the stock that's been made will have a gold lettering that will be revealed once you remove that patch. So underneath some gold lettering on 25% of the stock, adding to this rare air factor. Each pair is housed in a Jordan face box from the late 90s and early 2000s, now rendered in blacked out style. Even though this is like a new version, and I think it's actually cool that they did a new version, it does still continue the, uh, you know, the rare air series. The Air Jordan 5 black metallic, this one is going to be reimagined and it's returning February 2025, I imagine for All Star Weekend. This one's pretty massive. A lot of people are after this. A lot of people are super excited they're coming back. This is like sneaker of the year for a decent amount of people. But again, it didn't quite break the top 10. So the last Nike Air branded retro of this sneaker was 2016. And this one again is reimagined. So there's gonna be some slight changes. The pair will feature familiar white laces as worn by Mike himself, which you can see in this image over here, along with a contemporary tweak to the new buck overlay. So it's gonna have some kind of 3M finish to the upper, some kind of piping, I believe, around the edges of the material. But uh, yeah, some slight changes. It's a reimagined version and it's dropping February the 15th. All right, we're actually in the top 10 now. Uh, the Nike Air Foam Posit 1 Galaxy is returning. Uh, this one's also an all-star weekend release. February 2025. This one's so crazy because a lot of people strangely have been like, nah, we don't want them back. Just keep them as something special. Obviously, there is the other amount of people that have been like, yeah, we're so hyped to actually get our hands on this. It's something that, uh, you know, they either owned a pair or they couldn't get a pair and now they want to re-up in 2025. So there's a little bit of like a conflict. It's just a, a true retro of this iconic sneaker. Thinking about it now, this one could arguably have not made the top 10, but uh, Supreme is doing an Air Max 1 collection, which is supposed to release in 2025. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be super excited about this, but for me personally, I'm not the massive like Supreme guy. I'm not a big fan. I don't really own anything Supreme. Personally, for me, this wouldn't make the top 10. So yeah, I'm thinking about it now. I'd probably throw in like the metallic fives into the top 10 and swap it out. But hey, why not? There's most likely going to be a few different colorways. Red being one of them. I imagine they do like a green, maybe a black, and they do like, you know, a whole, the typical Supreme thing. If he does have bold lettering like this around there, I feel like this is going to be a flop. Like, really? Do we need the bold lettering? That just looks a little bit too in your face. So apparently we've got four different colorways. Again, not entirely sure what they're doing, but I assume red, green, and black are probably one of them. This one's also very new. The Air Jordan 1 High OG Shattered Backboard is coming back in 2025. This one I actually think is fair enough. It's been like a decade since the last, you know, good one. You know, probably for most people, the satins or, you know, the greasy, you know, shiny ones didn't quite do it for them. So if they wanted, you know, the actual Shattered Backboard, it's finally returning. The last one was, I believe, 2015. Correct me if I'm wrong. They've done so many, like, slight variations, but like a true one, finally, 2025, I think is fair enough. That one we could have seen coming. Apparently, the 2025 Shadow Backboard is expected to feature premium leather construction, maintaining the high standards of Jordan brand craftsmanship. Now, I don't know about all of that. I don't think Jordan brand craftsmanship is really up there if you had to put them against the best. But the interesting thing is that the Shadow Backboard is, was kind of like known for having amazingly good leather. Like, it's super soft. It's great. I've never felt it, but that's just what everybody refers to as like the pinnacle of Jordan 1 leather. So hopefully it maintains that because if if not, I know a ton of people are gonna have a problem with these. This one's interesting. So the Jordan 1 High OG UNC Reimagined is dropping summer 2025, but they're doing a little bit of a flip on this. So this could actually be the next kind of lost and found Jordan 1. So we know the lost and found incredible storytelling, special packaging, really, really solid release. And obviously you would expect that from a Chicago colorway, but the UNCs are going to be getting something very similar. So it's going to have that kind of aged aesthetic. So probably very similar to what we saw on the Lost and Founds, maybe some crackled leather, sailed out midsole and stuff like that. But the box that it's coming in is basically the Jordan 1 Lost and Founds, but just reverse. So now instead of the orange lid, we're getting the orange box. And instead of the, you know, black and red box, we're getting the black and red lid. Just look at this picture. That's it. That explains it all. So full family sizing, it's going to be a decent release. I hope they really do make it special because uh, a pair of UNCs is definitely something I am after 100%, especially if they do 
the release really, really well, make it a big deal and make people interested in the story again. I, I would love that. Okay, this is just gonna be one spot, but we've got three different Travis Scott Jordan 1 lows. This one's pretty crazy because Travis Scott, they've like lent into Travis Scott sneakers so hard with releasing his new sneaker model with the Jumpman Jack, the Sharkadon model, and then just a ton of Jordan 1 lows that are not only dropping this year, but there's plenty coming in 2025. These are the three that we know of right now. The pale vanilla colorway, don't get it confused with the golf version that just dropped. It's a slight little tweak. This is a spring 2025 release, so not that long. I think this was originally supposed to be a 2024 drop, but they've pushed it. So yeah, understandably, because they've got so many different Travis Scott sneakers dropping this year, they've got to have something for next year. This is probably my favorite one that's going to be dropping next year in terms of Travis Scott Jordan 1 lows, because we're also getting a shy pink colorway, which yeah, not my favorite. These are all mock-ups. They look exactly like this. Like we've seen an image of someone wearing it, I believe uh, Mike Rubin or something like that. So this is exactly what you can expect. You know, the pink suede on the base layer, the white leather overlays, and then just the vanilla or sail speckled all over it. I don't know why I said speckled, like just, you know, kind of, you know, touched up. The, the laces, the Nike swoosh, the midsole, that's all sale. And then the final Travis Scott is the, uh, the dark pony, which I don't mind actually. I feel like these and the pale vanillas would definitely be up there as nice. Not my favorite. It definitely, it kind of looks like a Valentine's type pair of shoes. These are also going to be a spring 2025 release and this is what they should look like although we haven't actually seen anybody wearing a physical pair in hand or anything like that let me know what you think of their strategy of really just going crazy on specifically the jordan one low with travis scott is it too much some people definitely think so they feel like they're just killing this sneaker and that you know the excitement for these new travis scott jordan ones is no longer going to be there but at the same time hardly anybody is ever able to get them so maybe it's a really good thing the air jordan 4 white cement is going to be dropping in 2025. This is huge. This is crazy. Spring, summer at some point. This is definitely one I'm after and a ton of other people as well. So the last release was 2016. This is going to be designed to the exact specifications of the original from 1989. So following along with the same thing, you know, that they kind of did with military blues, the bread falls, not really because they changed the whole like leather, but you know what I'm saying? They're not reimagining it in any crazy way. They are trying to make it as OG as possible. The Air Jordan 1 High 85 Bread. This is a Valentine's Day released. A couple very interesting things about this pair. So obviously it's an 85 cut. We expected that. February the 14th, if you didn't know when Valentine's Day was. These are going to retail at $250. That's the kicker. Apparently they're going to come with like extra premium materials. They're doing the whole special packaging and everything like that for this pair. But $250 is pretty crazy. That's a significant bump up. I think regular Jordan 1 85s are like $200, aren't they? So a whole $50, like it better be premium. And I do wonder how people are going to feel about that in 2025. Are they okay with $250 Jordan 1s? And if these cost $250, what are the Jordan 1 UNCs going to cost? The same? Then we've got the return of the Nike SB Jordan 4, but in different colors. We've got a red pair or university red colorway, exactly like the pine greens, just with red. This is a spring 2025 release. Not bad. Definitely prefer the originals. But then we're also getting a navy one, which I'm looking at these and I'm kind of like, okay, these, I might like these even more. This is another February 2025 release. So a lot of these things are coming like straight out the gate, just straight up. We're hitting 2025 and we are hitting some of the most hyped sneakers going. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Same everything, just literally swapped out the pine green for some navy and that is it. Now this is one that is just so insane. I cannot believe it's happening and a lot of people share that same feeling. Nike, do not do it. Do not do it, Nike. Do not do it. I don't care about you niggas that what? No. The PlayStation Nike Air Force One is expected to return in 2025. That's right. They're bringing back the PlayStation Air Forces. Now, these are insanely scarce, like insanely rare. I think they made 150 pairs to celebrate like the PlayStation 3 launch or the PlayStation 2 launch back in like 2006. And they're bringing them back, apparently. These didn't even have a release. Like, I believe they were gifted to Sony employees. So these having a drop in 2025 is wild and a lot of people are are actually saying don't do it. Don't ruin these things by bringing them back out again. I don't know how it would go if they did, but yeah, apparently these are coming back, which is wild. They definitely have to be up there as one of the craziest restocks retros that we've seen in recent time. And I think it just really shows Nike might be desperate and they're just pulling out all the stops. They're going crazy. But the first one has to be the undefeated Air Jordan 4, another insanely rare and like when it originally dropped was like super, super limited. 
72 pairs were made. That's it. So yeah, these are like one of the most rare Jordan 4s, rare Jordans on the planet. They were like reselling for like $30,000 or something ridiculous. So they definitely have to be at number one. It's coming back as like a true retro, like just like this is pretty wild. I cannot believe this is happening. I think a lot of people are just sat there like, is this really happening? Summer 2025 for these got a lot of people excited though. But I would love to know your thoughts on all of this. Is all of these retros, these all of these shoes that Nike is bringing back in 2025, is this going to fix their problem or make it a lot worse? Drop your thoughts down there. And if you want to catch another video, click that one right over there.